Hi, and welcome back to a new five-part series of Cooking with Nick. I'm Nick Rizzo, and during this session, I will show you with a little pre-planning how to produce a four-course delicious and healthy meal in under an hour. So sit back, relax, grab a pencil and paper to take notes so you can make this meal at home. My class is ready, and they look hungry, so I have to get started. Um, we'll get started. This is our fifth class, the last one for the fall season. I'm going to be looking at setting up some other classes for the, for the spring. Um, those of you who are here, I will notify you when those classes, if they, you know, I have to negotiate with the school again to find, get space and whatever. So, but if you've already enrolled in these classes, I'll let you know about those, either mail or email or however I contacted you before, just so you have a, a heads up on uh, and when they're going to be. Uh, the, what I'm thinking about doing is uh, international themes. So there would be, each week would be a different international food. Still the same thing. You'd have an entree, a side, a starter, and a, and a dessert. So I'm going to try to mess around with some classic dishes and try to, you know, make them so we can do them in under an hour. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll work on that. So uh, we'll see how that works. Right now I'm looking at doing a, a, a a Mexican or Spanish, uh, French, uh, Chinese, an Italian, of course, and an all good old all American one. <laughs> so, so I'm looking at those are the, the ones I'm looking at doing right now. That, that may change, but we'll see what happens. Okay, for tonight's meal, this is going to be one of those meals that you can throw together in a, a really, really short time. So uh, if you're really good and I stop talking, you can get out of here really quickly. So, um, yeah, so I know you all want to get home and watch Grey's Anatomy because, you know, I need to keep my daughter employed. So go home, make sure you watch, at least tape it. So, uh, so tonight we're going to be starting with, we're going to have a, a spinach and white bean salad, which is very simple. Uh, it's got fresh spinach in it. It's got uh, uh, navy beans, white beans. It's got some red pepper in it. It's got a lemon uh, vinaigrette and some shaved Parmesan cheese on top of it. It's very simple, very light, a nice salad that's going to go with the pasta dish, okay? Um, uh, the side dish is kind of uh, 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 silly. I made, I'm going to make a three cheese uh, toast, you know, garlic. It's not like garlic bread, but it's, like it's got three different kinds of cheeses on it. And I'll show you how to make that really, really simply, okay? Um, the the dessert we're going to have, we're going to have mini parfaits. It makes, it's going to have a layer of cake on the bottom, some fresh fruit, uh, like a, a faux pastry cream, and then it's layered, okay? And we're going to start with that. I'm going to make that first because that's got to set a little bit in the refrigerator. Uh, I have some over here, but I have, you know, 11 or 12 that I made this afternoon that are in the refrigerator already done. So, uh, so again, you won't have to split these. Okay, and you can make them in these little cups like this. You can use uh, champagne glasses. You could use fancy glasses that you have at home. This is a dessert that you could make way ahead of time. It'll stay in your refrigerator for six, eight hours. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. You could also make it as one big uh, trifle, you know, in a trifle bowl. Okay, so you can do it that way. I like the individual ones because I don't like to share my dessert. You know, <laughs> I like to have my own dessert. So. So this is a nice way to make that. Uh, the only problem you have with that is you have to make, you know, you have to have room in your refrigerator if you have a lot of people coming. So, or, or if you have weather like we have around here, just put it on your porch, you know, so you don't have to worry about it. So we're going to do that. Uh, the entree we're going to have, we're going to have pasta alla puttanesca, which is a real, real quick uh, pasta sauce. Um, I'm, I'm going I'm to explain to you where it comes from. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, putana is the Italian word for prostitute. Okay, so this is a sauce that, oh, please, get over it, cover her ears. <laughs> so, <laughs> she hears more than that on a school bus. So, uh, it's, it's a sauce that the story goes that the women of the evening used to prepare really quickly in between customers. 
Okay, <laughs> so it was something that they had to make really, really fast. I don't know how much time they needed off, but you know, it only takes about 10 minutes to make the sauce. Uh, the other story is, is that they used to make this early on in the evening, and they used to put the pot on the windowsill, and the smell used to entice the customers to come in. Okay, so, to, so whatever, whatever, however you want to prepare it, and whatever you want to use it for is up to you. So, but uh, this is a, a great sauce. Uh, and I'll show you how to make it. It only takes about five, ten minutes to make. And there's different variations you could make on this. Uh, my, my wife likes it. I make the sauce. She likes to put at the very end, you throw in some shrimp, clams, mussels, and uh, whatever kind of seafood you want. The last minute, you wait for the clams and mussels to open. And then you serve it over pasta. And you have pasta alla putinesca with fish. Okay, So you can make it all different ways. Okay. So we're going to get started. The first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to make a couple of the desserts. So oh, let me give you the, the uh, here you go, pal. That's your job. Thanks. So we're going to start with the desserts. So again, what I need to do is I'm going to cut up some fruit. And you could use, you know, different kinds of fruit. I'm going to use some banana. I'm going to use some strawberries. I'm going to use uh, blueberries and a couple of kiwi. Okay, and uh, I, I find that that fruit, that, that combination of fruit holds up fairly well when you make it ahead. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to dice up all the fruit and just put it in a bowl. And if you don't want to put these together real quickly, you could uh, dice up all the fruit, leave it in your refrigerator. Uh, if you really wanted to get fancy with it, you could add a little bit of Grand Marnier to it, which is uh, orange flavored liqueur. And uh, do it in the morning, let it sit in your refrigerator, let it macerate, okay? It'll, the, the Grand Marnier will bring out all the juices in it, okay? Plus, you know, you can get your friends loaded while they're having dessert, so, you know. But, uh, so you could put that in, or you could use a little bit of brandy, okay? Whatever kind of liqueur you want, or you just serve it plain like we're going to have tonight, okay? So I have one, I'm using one banana, and the amount of fruit... You know, I put the, the amount of fruit on there, but the amount of fruit is going to depend on how many you want to make. So this will make about six, okay? So I found these little strawberries today at, at Tops that uh, actually there are 10 for 10. I mean blueberries, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the strawberries over here going, okay, strawberries, I picked this up. Okay, the blueberries. So uh, uh, they're t they're, they were 10 for 10, they're a buck a piece. They're, little, they're in like a little the fruit section where the snack fruit is, you know. Uh, they're actually cheaper than buying the basket of fruit. So plus you can, they keep longer and you can use as many as you like. So these are an ounce and a half, so I'm going to put two of these in here. Okay, so and if you have extra ones, you could have them for snacks. Okay, I have some kiwi, I have two kiwi. My son used to work with a guy in his, in his office who uh, loved kiwi, but he, he used to cut off the ends and then he would just eat it with the skin on it, you know. I, so uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know it was edible, but I guess it is. He's still working, so I didn't, you know. But that, that's coming off for me. I don't like that. You could cut up grapes. You could use, uh, you know, uh, I, would, I would not use like cantaloupe or melon, okay, because that would get too watery. So that you don't want to do. You could use apples. If you have some real hard peaches, you could use peaches. Okay. You just want to cut the fruit up so they're all about the same size. And we'll do the same thing with the strawberries or blueberries, whatever I have over there. I think this strawberries. Okay, got those in the bowl. And I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe this up. Because they the kiwi are really kind of slimy. Okay, so I have some some strawberries, okay, that I washed 
just before we started along with my hands. We're just going to dice these up. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a layer of cake, we're going to have a layer of fruit, a layer of the faux pastry cream, and then another layer of cake and repeat that. And then we're going to top it with some sliced almonds. Just give them a quick chop. Ooh. You don't want to get them really, really teeny. I mean, you want to see the fruit when you, you put it in there. And you're probably going to use about... Uh, you know, a tablespoon or so in between each layer, so you can kind of judge to see how many you need. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Okay, so we have our fruit done. We're gonna make the faux pastry cream. Pick that up. Wash my hands. Has strawberries on the floor. I don't want to. We don't know what's been walking on this floor. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now the 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 cream that I'm going to make is actually something you could use with any kind of dessert you want to make. Uh, you just take some Cool Whip or whatever kind of whip topping you want to use and, and, we're, and we're actually what we're going to do is dress it up. You know, if you, if you had to make a pastry cream, it would take like forever. You know, you got to do the eggs and let them sit and then you got to put the saran wrap on it so it doesn't get a skin and, you know, all that, all that stuff I don't like to do. So I'm going to use two pudding cups, okay, and I'm going to mix it in with this. And the, the pudding cups is going to give it a little bit of body, and then we're going to add some flavoring to it. Okay, you could do this with chocolate, uh, and this works real well when you're making a trifle. You know, instead of making all that pastry cream stuff, just use this. And what the only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to whip this, because what'll happen is this will all deflate, and then you want to keep that airy. Okay, I'm going to use almond extract in here. And put about about a half a teaspoon, which would be about a capful. And then you want to fold this in. So what you do is start in the middle and just kind of do like a figure eight. You know, so you fold that in like that. And, and you'll see, you won't see the pudding anymore. And that's what you're looking for. So there you go. So that part's done. Our fruit is done. Just give that a stir. Like I said before, if you wanted to make this in the morning, uh, let it go. If you wanted to add a little bit of Grand Marnier or brandy, you could do that. <clears throat> okay. You that part's... Put any kind of on there, so no, I'm not going to put anything on it. I'm not going to put anything on that, okay? Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to use uh, pound cake as the cake. And again, I told you that this is my favorite place is the Dollar Tree to get these pound cakes. These are a dollar. Okay. Go. You could, you could take the same filling, take the pound cake, and slice it into thirds the long way. Okay, put one layer down, put a, put a layer of the cream on it, put some of the fruit, put the next cake, put it again, and then make it that way, then you slice it. Okay, so you, you could do it that way with the pound cake. You could use this to make a lot of different desserts. Okay. For one class we had, I made a pound cake. And it's, it's very expensive to make pound cake, but uh, 
the original pound cake is called pound cake because it used to be made with a pound of eggs, pound of butter, pound of flour. Okay, so that's how you made the cake. So that's why it was called pound cake. Okay, but when I made it, uh, it was about nine pounds. I don't know what I did, but it was like, I don't know what I did, but boy, that sucker was about this high. It was like, ugh, you know, so you know I don't like to bake, so I just, that's why. I probably, I don't know, I probably mismeasured the eggs or the butter or what, I don't know. I probably put like four pounds of butter in there. I don't know what I was doing. So, you know, because I don't like to follow directions, so I had a hard time with that. So, but thought you'd like to know about the pound cake, so. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, slice this up. And again, I said if you wanted to, you could slice it into thirds, put the filling in, okay? And you have a nice little, nice little cake that way, okay? So I'm just going to dice this up. Okay. A little bit in the bottom of each each cup. I have to make an extra one of these because this is the only part of the meal that I'll eat. Is uh, you know, so I got to make sure I have one for B. Okay. Oops, so there we go. Okay, so we got the first layer in. What we're gonna do? We add some fruit. Okay, so we got that, and now we're going to add some of the pastry cream, or cream. Don't ask me why I didn't get a spoon, I'm trying to use this, this spatula, but. See, when you people leave, I have to wash all this stuff, so I try to use as little things as I can. <laughs> so there you go. So that one container is going to probably make anywhere from 8 to 10 of these when you have that one container of Cool Whip, the 8-ounce container. Okay, so again, we're going to add another layer of cake. And it, this is the same process you would use if you were making a big trifle. Okay. that down a little bit. We add some more fruit. You want to end up with the cream on top. Okay, I'm just going to stuff this in there because I don't want to end up with any fruit left. This one's mine. Don't eat that. Okay, I'm going to top it again with another layer of cream. You could do the same thing and use, if you wanted to use uh, regular whipped cream. Just use regular whipped cream and then just flavor the whipped cream with uh, almond extract when you're whipping it. Well, I'd just say we skip the salad and just eat these first. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. We have those. I have some sliced almonds. And these are, have been toasted, so if you want to uh, toast them, you put them in a dry frying pan and then just put them over the heat 
Uh, or you can put them in the oven, you know, and just, you know, put them in there while you're doing something else in the oven. But you have to watch them really quick because there's oil in the, in the nuts, and what will happen is they'll burn. They burn very, very f quickly. Okay? So there we go. We have that done. Okay, let's put these in the refrigerator. I'm going to I'm going to get the uh, the garlic toast or the cheese toast in the oven, and then then we're going to start on the sauce. Let me get this cleaned up a little bit here. Get this out of the way. You know what, I'll, I'll do the salad, and then you guys will have something to eat, okay? Uh, and then I'll, I'll get the toast going. Before you eat the salad, I'll start the toast, get that in the oven, and then we'll be on our way. Give that a quick wash. Again, this salad is just a spinach and white bean salad. Uh, real, real simple, real easy to make, and very healthy. And it has the lemon vinaigrette dressing in it, so uh, a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't like spinach, plain spinach, you know, raw and, and the white beans. But th but the the dressing makes it very light. Okay. Again, I'm going, to, I'm going to use our mini salad bowl, <laughs> which, <laughs> okay, and I, I always buy, this is like baby spinach that's already washed and whatever, so you don't have to do anything, okay? Now, this says on the back of the package, servings per container, two, okay? But I asked about that at the store. I said, what do you mean, two servings? They said, well, if you cook it. To get two servings, okay? I said, well, I'm making a salad. I said, how many servings do you? Oh, you should, well, you should get about five. I said, okay. So, I don't know. We'll see. Seems like a lot of spinach. <laughs> so, I, <don't> know. <laughs> I think I'm going to do two. Two packages. And then this will be for my wife and I. I'll cook it. And because it has tomatoes, it has uh, ro uh, red peppers in it, it has beans. Uh, I'm going to shave this Parmesan cheese on it. Okay. So the beans I'm going to have to rinse. Get these out of here. So I'm going to put these in a little strainer and. Give them, you could use cannellini beans. You could, you could actually use whatever kind of beans you like. I mean, you know, if you wanted to use red kidney beans, uh, you could use that. But we're going to have red uh, uh, pepper in here, so just give it a little bit of a different color. That's why I like the white beans. Okay. I brought an extra can, but this two of them looks like it's going to be plenty. Remember, if you get cannellini beans, cannellini beans are bigger. So, so when you go to the store, look for the small navy beans, okay? Okay, I'm going to sit these here and let them drain a little bit because I don't want all that water in here. I'm going to use these red peppers. And again, when you're cutting the pepper, just go along the edge and go around. You know, and you avoid, you'll avoid most of the seeds. Not all of them, but 
and it's easy to get them out. So again, you can just go down one edge and then just go right around the outside. These peppers are huge. Okay, now we're going to again cut them into strips. If you really wanted, you didn't want to do this part, you, you can go to the salad bar and get them already cut, you know. <laughs> or you can, some stores uh, have the peppers, like on a Sunday morning if you go, like they have the vegetables that are left over from the week, and they have them all chopped up like this and put them in a little, uh, a, uh, you know, a little package so that they're already chopped up for you. And they're the same price. And again, make sure when you're cutting peppers that you, you're cutting with the shiny side down so that the knife doesn't slip on that, you know. Okay, so we have them all chopped that way. I'm just going to go across them and cut those long pieces in half. Okay, so our pepper's done. And we have our beans, nice and drained, throw those in. Like that. I'm going to add some tomatoes. And I'm going to use plum tomatoes because I'm going to do the plum tomatoes the same way I did the pepper. I'm going to go around the outside because then you eliminate all the seeds. Okay, otherwise you have to, you know, you get the bigger tomatoes and there are a lot of seeds in it. So you're paying for the weight of the, of the seeds inside the tomato, the plum tomatoes are your better deal, okay? So again, you go on the outside. And that whole piece right there, that's all seed. So you, know, you just go around the outside. If you wanted to and you didn't want to bother with this, just use uh, cherry tomatoes. Just throw cherry tomatoes in there. I would cut them in half. Okay. So now we just want to cut these up. You, know, you can cut them randomly. You don't have to make really teeny little pieces. Draw them in. Um, another thing you could add to this, if you like, is, is some uh, uh, red onion. Would give it another little color to throw in there. Remember, if you're going to use red onion, slice them up, put them in some ice water, let them sit there for about 10 minutes. That'll take that sharp edge off the tomato. It won't. A lot of people don't like uh, red onion because it has a, a sharp taste to it. So if you soak it in ice water, that will take that sharp taste off. It'll be much, much milder when you eat it. Okay. Okay, I think I have everything in there. Okay, I have some Parmesan cheese. Okay, this is, this is just a block of Parmesan cheese. This is, this is what it looks like before you grate it, okay? <laughs> a, lot of pe a lot of people don't know what Parmesan cheese looks like, you know? It comes on a big wheel, it's hard, you know, so it's easy to grate. And it has a rind on the outside of this. So what you can do with that is you take, when you get down to that part and you take the rind off, put it in a little baggie, stick it in your freezer. When you're making a soup, you know, throw the rind in, okay? And it gives it a nice 
a uh, little cheesy flavor to it. So, so I always have like rinds in my freezer, and if I'm making like a chowder or something else, then you could just take the rind out and throw it in there, and, uh, and it, it almost melts. But when you get to the end, you, you, know, you go to serve the soup, just make sure you don't serve somebody that little, pe that rind, you know, it looks like a, well, it looks nasty, okay? But just, you just fish it right out, okay? So I'm gonna take a, a potato peeler, vegetable peeler, and just go down and make some curls. This is the same thing you can do if you want to shave chocolate, make chocolate curls. This is what you use a potato peeler. And if you didn't want it, if you didn't want these big pieces of Parmesan cheese, you can just get the shredded Parmesan cheese. Yeah. I like the big chunks. I used to eat this when I was, you know was little, and my sister and I always used to go in the, in the refrigerator and eat the Parmesan cheese, because my mother never bought shredded. I mean, we always had these big chunks of Parmesan cheese. So one day she told us that if we kept eating those, we would get worms in our stomach. Okay, so, so then we started eating it more because we wanted to find out if we were gonna get worms. You know, so, but they used to tell us some bizarre stuff to try to get us not to eat stuff, so. And I never did get worms, so I don't know. So I just, I keep eating it. <laughs> okay, so we have that in there. Now we're going to make the dressing. Let me get this wrapped back up. And again, the dressing is just going to be lemon juice, olive oil, some seasonings. And I'm going to use a juicer. And these tomatoes were fairly large, so I didn't put them all in there. And let's see. So you need to, we need to get about about a half a cup of lemon juice. So I I, I said four lemons, but. Uh, We'll see how much that makes, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zest two of these because I hate to lose that lemony flavor. So I'm going to zest them right into the, into the salad. I don't know if that, is that in the recipe? Does it say to zest the lemon? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. You could either zest it in here or you could zest it in the, in the dressing, but I'll just do it right in here. Make sure again that you only get the yellow part, not the white. The white is very bitter. Okay, I'm going to roll these so we can get the most juice out of them. Gets a lot of that. You could make this lemon vinaigrette if you have extra. And just leave it in your refrigerator. You, when you have salad, you could just, you know, you got to take it out though because the, the olive oil congeals when it's in your refrigerator. So you got to take it out and let it sit on your counter for a little bit. See how much we got in here. I'll do one more. You can either roll them like that or put them in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Get the most juice out of them. You could make the same dressing using oranges if you wanted to. Okay, you can make orange vinaigrette. Okay. You should have about half, three quarters of a cup. And... Put 
put that in there. Ooh, there's, there's a little seed in there. Well, so much for that thing. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, I usually do like a two to one, or a two to one or three to one, depending on how, what kind of flavor you want, with the olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to add just a little bit of sugar to this, okay, because the lemon is, is really tart. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. Now you could leave that out if you, if you don't want the sugar in there. Okay, now I'm going to whisk it. Okay, so that's our dressing. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'm going to, you're going to have salad. I'm going to get stuff ready to assemble the puttanesca sauce. I'm going to get the pasta going. Again, what I did before we break here, ow, I pre-cooked the pasta, okay? Um, this pasta, the pasta that I'm going to use tonight, I like playing around with different shapes with pasta. So this pasta is called fuz long fusilli. If you see fusilli like with Barilla or any of those brands, it's usually those little spirals, those little corkscrews, okay? This is called long fusilli, okay? It's like long spaghetti, but it's all, you know, curly like that. So I, it's just a different way to serve, ser serve the, the pasta. My kids all had curly hair. I have curly hair. My wife has curly hair. So we used to serve this. My kids used to like go like this, you know, like they used to. So that's what we're going to have tonight. So I pre-cooked this. Again, when you're making pasta, if you cook it and uh, cook it about three or four minutes, four or five minutes less than what it says on the package, put it in a baggie with some olive oil so it doesn't stick together. It'll stay in your refrigerator for about four or five days. Then when you're ready to use it, boil some water, throw it in. Cook it for about three minutes, let it finish cooking, heat up, and you're all ready to go. Okay? So that's what I'm going to be doing. I have the water going over here, and we'll be finishing cooking that. And you're going to have salad now, so we're going to break. You're going to have salad. I'll clean up and get ready for part two. We've already got the dessert done. We've already got salad done, and it's only 10 after, so we're doing pretty well. Okay? Okay, I'll put that over there, and you guys can eat. <laughs> I always feel like a uh, jack and giant beanstalk, you know, when I'm serving this. <laughs> okay, salad was good. Nice light dressing. As Beth said, it's a very colorful salad. Looks good. You can serve that at Christmas. It's all red and green. Looks nice. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to do the uh, the three cheese uh, toast and. Just to, to get you started, to show you how I got started with this, what I did is before you guys got here, I, I toasted the bread a little bit, okay? And what I did is I toasted it, put it back into the bag, okay? So when you get ready to go, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these, I'm going to brush them with olive oil, and then I'm going to put the cheese on it, and we're going to put them back in the oven. Okay, because uh, we want, basically what we want now is for all the cheese to melt on top of it. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So you could get started on your garlic toast by toasting the bread ahead of time. Okay, and just have it ready to go. So move that out of the way. And what, what I got, you could use regular Italian bread, whatever kind of bread you like. This was a, a loaf of round, a round loaf of bread. Okay, and then I had the, the bakery slice it, okay? So when you go to the bakery, th they'll slice the bread for you, even if you get a long loaf of Italian bread. Tell them what, how big you want the slices, and then they'll put it through the machine. They could adjust that machine to slice it whatever thickness you want, okay? Saves you all that time of slicing the bread, especially if you know you're going to make garlic bread or whatever. So I told them I needed, you know, 20 slices or whatever out of that. So they just sliced it, so... That's good. So I'm going to uh, mix the cheese up, then I'm going to brush these with some olive oil, then I'm going to stick those in the oven, 
Then we're going to get started on the Puchinesca, because that sauce, I said, is very, very quick. And uh, we'll get that going real quick. Okay, so to put on top of this, we're going to use some shredded Parmesan cheese. And again, it's, it's shredded, it's not grated. Okay. So we're going to put about, about a cup. Yeah, what is this? Yeah, five ounces. And then I have, here, I have some shredded Fontina cheese. Fontina cheese is, is a, a soft a cow's milk cheese. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of got a, it's not quite Swiss cheese, not quite Gruyere, but it's a nice soft cheese. It melts really well. But you, you, you have to buy the block and then you have to grate it, you shred it yourself, okay? You won't find it, you won't find it shredded. But it's a very, very soft, very fragrant cheese. Okay, I like the, the Fontina like on pizza. It has, it has a, a nice different taste. Okay, so we got that, that in. And we have some shredded mozzarella cheese. And that you can just buy. It, make sure you get the stuff that's like fine. You know, it's like finely shredded. And, and you have to adjust this as to how many you're going to make. You know, I mean, you know, you, you look and figure out how much you're going to make. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, remember, the, the cheese is salty, so you don't want it to add a whole lot. Okay. Get that in. Some dried, dried parsley flakes. Uh, you don't want to use fresh parsley on this because it's going to be in the oven, and, and if it's on top, it'll burn. Okay, so use the dried, and then we'll mix it in. And this will just give it a little bit of color. Okay, so we got that in, got that in. I'm going to add, uh, so, you know, I, I have to add red pepper flakes. I, I just can't do it. I can't cook without them. So just, I'll put a little in. If you see it on there and you don't like it, pick it off. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, just eat it, scream, and we'll know you got it. Okay. So that's basically all that we're putting in there. You just want to make sure it's all mixed up together. You could do the same thing. You could go into the store and get a large flat bread, you know, or a naan bread, and just use that. Toast that a little bit. Just put this as the, as the topping and then just slice it into strips. You don't have to go through all the bread and all that stuff. So you can do that. Especially, I usually, I'll, I'll do that like if I'm making something like for the, for the two of us. Because you don't, you know, a lot of times you buy like a whole big loaf of bread and then, you know, it's left. So you make breadcrumbs, you stick it in the freezer, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to brush the, this is just olive oil in here. I'm just going to brush this. Just olive oil will just give it a nice little taste. If you don't want to brush it, uh, you know, at home I have, well, you know, with a little spout on it, and then you can just drizzle it over, you know. I guess the, oven's up, the oven is up to temperature. I could feel it. <laughs> Okay, so we got those. I have some more over here. And, and again, you could get a pastry brush if you want. This is just a paintbrush, okay, for 99 cents from Home Depot or whatever. Or you can go buy a pastry brush and spend 20 bucks on it or, you know. And uh, I put this in and out of my dishwasher, so it holds up. And, and for 99 cents, you could throw it out. What happened? You're not going to put a garlic in it? Oh, did I put the garlic in? No. Oh, well, we'll do that now. All right. Okay. Right here. Thanks, Darlene. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the garlic cloves in. Um, again, I'm going to put three or four 
whatever, give them a quick smash. And these we want to be, to be fine, so I'm going to put them in the uh, garlic press. Take the skin off. That, put that in there. Pampered chef. <laughs> now, you want it to be nice and fine, so because it's, you got to spread it around in there. Okay. Let me put one more in. Okay, so get that in. Okay, now what we're going to do is make sure that garlic is spread around in there. Ooh, smell like garlic. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're just going to spread the cheese on these and get them in the oven. I'm coming. And again, if you if you make this cheese and you have a lot of it left over, put it put it in a baggie. That's the oven. This came up to temperature, right? <laughs> so that's uh, just put this in a baggie, stick it in your freezer, okay? And, and you could use it for some other use. If you wanted to, you could put some olives on here. You could dress them up a little bit. Could actually make them like little pizza. So that, that bit that I made there, that, that bowl full made, there's 20 here, okay? So that made 20 big <coughs> slices, okay? Okay, I'm trying to get these in the oven. And all we're waiting to do with these is for them to melt, the cheese to melt, okay? I have this oven on back here. Okay, pasta's cooking. Let's start the sauce. Okay, I'm going to put that on medium high. So we're back up to the puttanesca. Now I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of this pan. Okay, some garlic. This is a sauce that I made this afternoon. I'm going to add some of that to that. Let me get some garlic going in here. This is the kind of sauce where you really want to have every, everything ready in place because it doesn't take very long to cook. I'm going to put that in before it comes up to temperature because I want the, the olive oil the olive oil to be infused with the garlic. So what you do is you put the put the olive oil in a cold pan, 
then put the garlic in, and then let it come up to temperature. And then you'll get a real uh, garlicky infused oil that way. Okay. I'm going to add one more because that doesn't really look like enough. Depends on the size of your garlic cloves. Give me a heads up, Carolyn, to check this garlic choice every once in a while because it's starting to melt already. Uh, I'm going to put in here, it says anchovies in there, and I know a lot of people don't like anchovies. Uh, I don't like fish, so, uh, but when you use anchovies and it cooks, it gets like a nutty taste. So what I'm going to use is anchovy paste, okay, instead of the anchovies. So you just get anchovy paste. You're going to put a little bit of that in there. Okay, and you'll get that nutty flavor of the anchovies, but you won't get that uh, the fishy taste. Well, you wouldn't get the fishy taste anyway because the anchovies like dissolve. Okay, I'm going to put in some pepper flakes just so they get infused with the olive oil. Okay, and what you want to do with that with the uh, uh, the anchovy paste is smash it down so that it melts. It melts right into the into the uh, sauce. And the anchovies would do the same thing. The anchovies are so thin that you stir them in there, they would dissolve and you would never see them in there. Okay, let that sit a bit and let me go get the other stuff. We got capers, oregano, Can of uh, diced tomatoes. I mean, let that go a little bit until you can smell the, the garlic. Okay. And because we have a few more people, I'm going to add just a half a can instead of a whole can of the diced tomatoes. Okay, so that's beginning to brown a little bit. Uh, can you smell the garlic? Can you mm -hmm. smell the garlic? Check the toast. Check the toast. Check the toast. Check the That looks good. Okay, give me about three more minutes. We'll be ready to go. <laughs> that's, we should have the sauce going by then. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add the tomatoes. I'm going to drain this a little bit. These are Kalamata olives, which you can get in a jar or you can get at the salad bar. They have a very, very distinct taste. They're a lot different than uh, regular black olives. Okay. Give that a quick stir. Have capers. Capers are actually a bud of a plant. It's it's the uh, the buds. Okay. Put those in. You want to be when you're using capers. You want to be real careful about using salt because these are, are in a brine, a vinegar brine, and they, they could be very salty. Okay, we're going to add some oregano. Now, we're not using Italian seasoning because that's got other stuff in it. This is just plain oregano. Hmm? Can you use basil instead um, of oregano? Well, it, it, basil has a, a totally different taste. That's, that's why if you use Italian seasoning, it has basil and oregano and thyme and a bunch of different stuff in it. So you want to be careful if you use that. Okay? We're going to put some fresh parsley on the top. Okay? Have some 
Kalamata olives. Has anybody never had Kalamata olives? Come, come taste these here. They, they, taste, they taste quite a bit different than regular olives. Come here, Patty. Anybody else? Have you had them? You don't want to try them? Get up here. Try this. Where's your, where's your spirit of adventure? <laughs> you came here to learn new things. Now try that olive. <laughs> My son-in-law does not like olives, so I'm training him to eat olives. You know, I said, how could you marry into an Italian family and not eat olives? So, so he's very adventurous, so he's trying. I'm just going to take these Kalamata olives. They, they taste a lot different there. And, and although they say they're pitted, I, I like to run the knife through them a little bit because every once in a while you'll come across a pit. So I'm not going to really chop them. I'm just going to run the knife through to make sure they don't have pits in them. Okay, and then throw them in. And again, these are very salty, so you want to be careful that you don't add salt. Okay. And uh, I guess those ladies of the evening must have made a lot of money because these are very expensive. So, you know, unless they had olive trees hanging outside on your balcony, I don't know what... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's done. I'll take that out in a second. This is just this, this sauce is just about done. Okay, what I'm going to do is this is sauce I made this afternoon. I'm going to add this because we have twice as much uh, pasta here. If I can get the top off, and again, you could make this and freeze it. I had three mushrooms left in my refrigerator this afternoon, so, so if you taste the sauce from this afternoon, you, you get a mushroom, then you get a prize. <laughs> I guess. Let me take this out. Okay. That's done. Okay, that's all. Okay, I'm going to drain the pasta because the sauce is all done. Okay, as I said before, if you wanted to, you could add, at this point, you could throw in clams, mussels, uh, some uh, raw shrimp, and some raw fish. Put, put the cover on it and let it all steam, and in about three minutes, you know, you watch the mussels will open, the clams will open, and then you can serve this right over pasta. Okay? This out of the way, I'm going to drain the pasta. I'm going to put this in. this container <laughs> so that at the end we don't have to wash it. Okay. I went to find a colander in here this afternoon when I brought some stuff up and the colander is about this big. You could drain like about four noodles in it. So I, had, so I, had, I said I have to bring the, the colander up. you're hungry. I made two pounds of this. Okay, I'm not going to rinse this. I don't know if it's all going to fit. No. 
I don't know. Hope you guys hope you guys are hungry. So you don't usually rinse your pasta, huh? Um, usually when I make the sauce, the the pasta would go in here. Okay? And you mix it in that way rather than just pouring it on the top. So I mean, you don't rinse your pasta with water. No, I take it I take it right from the pot all the time and put it right in. No, I uh, well, if you rinse it, what happens is, is uh, the, the sauce doesn't stick to it because you're rinsing off all the starch. Okay. Plus, if you take it from the pot and put it into your sauce, and if your sauce thickens up, then you, you have some of the water left from the pasta, and then you could save that water and add it to thin out your sauce. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to pour this on top. This is stir. I have some uh, grated Parmesan cheese over there if you want to add some Parmesan cheese to it. Okay, I'm going to move this over here. Uh, you guys can eat. And the bread's over here, so grab yourself some bread, grab the pasta, and you're all set to go. Um, how was it? Was it spicy or, you know, you could, you could adjust that sauce, you know, if you like it spicy, or a little more hot pepper, or however you want to do that, uh, a little more oregano. You, you have to play with that sauce for a while until you get it the way you want. I just like it because it's real quick. It's a very quick sauce to make. Okay, so uh, what we have left now is dessert. These are the ones that I made this afternoon. Uh, and these are the ones that we made during class. So when you're ready, well, that was our class for this session, and I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something along the way. If you could not attend the class and are interested in the recipes, you can email me at nrizzo at roadrunner.com. I would like to thank Chicago Lake Central School, Mrs. Amy Redman, all my class participants, and my wife Kathy for her support in my many crazy endeavors. Thank you. <laughs>